crossing analyses of the IT industry and international relations. Welcome to the Tech Geopolitics Unveiled, I'm Rocky Uriankai. Today we're talking about a prediction made by Taiwan's semiconductor industry that Taiwan's IC design industry is estimated to be overtaken by China's in 2026. The prediction was written in the Taiwan EC Design Industry Policy White Paper published by the Taiwan Semiconductor Industry Association at the end of March this year. Here and after I will refer to it as white paper. Will this prediction come true? Of course, we have to examine what it is based on. Another thing is, it is not surprising for China to try its best to catch up with others as its semiconductor industry development is being strangled by the U.S. But what about Taiwan? Why doesn't it have any reaction over China catching up? Of course it has, but not a fast one. Taiwan's Ministry of Science and Technology nearly five months later finally put forward a chip-driven Taiwan Industrial Innovation Program, or Chip Innovation Program for short, but the program will not activate until 2024. That quite slow. Can it effectively maintain the Taiwan IC industry's existing leadership over China? The key, of course, lies in how much funding the government is prepared to invest to support the IC design industry. We will talk about the number at the end. I'm not trying to be mysterious, but if I simply put out the figure, most of us will not feel how important the numbers are, so putting out and making comparisons will give a better understanding of whether the amount is enough. Before today's program begins, let's start promotional services first. The IT industry is changing rapidly. How can we grasp the most accurate and important information in the shortest time? Digitimes is the world's most professional Chinese language IT industry newspaper. Digitimes launches the mobile edition of Digitimes to help readers acquire first-hand industry information anytime and anywhere. Check out the description section below the video for more information about the mobile version of Digitime. Well, first of all, many viewers may know that the world has nearly 200 countries and regimes, but the semiconductor industry in the world only has a total of six major powers. Do you know who they are? That is, the oldest US and Europe. I count the whole Europe as one. The other four are all in East Asia and sort based on their development progress. They are Japan, Korea, Taiwan, and China. Then some will think that the Netherlands, Israel, Malaysia, and Singapore all have a position in the global IC, or semiconductor supply chain. Especially Singapore, a country that is small in size, but ambitious, worthy of our attention. We will do an episode in the future dedicated to Singapore's semiconductor industry, which is pushing for expansion. Some people also mentioned India. Modi is very aggressive about joining in. However, despite the nation with a 1.4 billion population having been talking about building its first foundry for many years, there is still no sign of it coming. We feel sorry for India, but it is still not quite ready for the game yet. So what about the top six major players and their current strength? The chart on page 18 of the white paper was titled Major Nation Semiconductor Product Revenue Estimates. It wrote the estimates in the title because the figures at the time were not yet fully determined, but the numbers are now all determined and they are not far off from the estimates. Within the revenues of these six superpowers, the figures are counted separately by the IC design and IDM industries. The base unit is your 100 million and also has revenue share. It was all listed clearly, and let us take a look at it. The US was the absolute leader with a 50% share. South Korea, with Samsung and SK Hynix producing a large number of memory chips, had a share of 18%. The other four players all had less than 10%, with Europe having 9%, Japan and Taiwan each having 8%, and China having 7%. Taiwanese viewers may immediately feel something is wrong. Where is TSMC? Why is it not here? Japan and Germany have asked TSMC to set up factories locally to teach them how to make high-end chips. So why is Taiwan's revenue share of the semiconductor industry so low? OK, please look at this chart carefully and think for a second. The answer is because this chart only has IC design and IDM, these two sub-industries. Why only list these two sub-industries? Because only IC Design and IDM are branded companies that produce chips with their company logos on them. So you get the idea TSMC is a pure play foundry, a bit like a silent hero behind the scenes, only to provide other design companies such as Qualcomm, NVIDIA, and AMD manufacturing services. Of course, if we were to look at the entire industry chain in full detail, other sub-industries' contributions, such as the foundry, packaging, and testing can also be seen. But today, our focus is on IC design. So let's take a look at the chart just now. Now, we highlight Europe, Japan, and South Korea's IC design production values, highlighting the revenue share areas. Don't you feel a little strange about the numbers? You can see they are all less than 1%. How are they so little? This does not mean that Europe, Japan, and South Korea do not have the ability to do IC design. 
but because they focus heavily on doing jobs of IDMs, integrated device manufacturers, that is, they integrate the design and manufacturing together and are handling all the works by themselves. In other words, their IC design capabilities are hidden in the IDM. Unlike the US, Taiwan, and China, which have many independent IC design companies, of the global top six semiconductor superpowers, if we only look at the IC design, there are only three superpowers. The US's share of 24% will keep it on the top, while in the second leading group will be only Taiwan and China left with the former having a 7% share and the latter a 5%. Their difference was only two percentage points, making the situation interesting. The meaning of the white paper's prediction was that Taiwan, which has a 7% share, was only leading China's 5% by two percentage points. In the future, after this year, which is 2023, Taiwan will likely be caught up by China by 2026. But what will cause it to happen? The publication in the white paper on page 37 had an explanation. I put out a few of its key points, which said that Taiwan's IC design industry except for a few major companies with large enough scale and important core technologies, is heavily occupied by small and medium enterprises. The original content said that Taiwan's small and medium enterprises are profiting via cutting costs, but China's IC design industry, facing the U.S.'s export control measures, is mainly seeking to comply with the sanction and to survive, and will therefore focus more on mature chips, giving up the development of high-end ones giving up the advanced process to focus on the mature one and giving up the cloud-based industrial products to turn to edge consumer products, both sound reasonable despite the correctness. So where does the problem lie? What does it have to do with Taiwan? Let's think together again for a second. The answer is that these low-end mature process-made consumer chip products are also the businesses that the majority of Taiwan's IC design companies have long relied for their operation, according to the white paper. What does this mean? It means that the cross-strait IC design industries will have to compete for the same market face-to-face. -face. The question is, who is better at reducing cost when it comes to the low-end mature manufacturing process? Who is closer to the demand market and can have full control of it? We all know the answer to that. The white paper also covered a lot of details such as the supply of manpower, the government's financial support, etc. These are all areas where China is stronger than Taiwan. Therefore, the white paper made the conclusion that the total production value of Taiwan's IC design industry will be surpassed by China in 2026. The white paper, of course, also cited the US, Europe, Japan, South Korea, and China's national semiconductor strategies, and urged the Taiwanese government and the ruling party to propose a similar level semiconductor strategy instead of industrial innovation regulations based on the current law. Giving childish assistance such as tax exemption for R&D and investments the implication is that the semiconductor and IC industries are hoping the government to invest more money to support them. Well, as I just said at the beginning, Taiwan's government finally made a response. And in August, the government is rumored to be pushing the Chip Driven Taiwan Industrial Innovation Program, or the Chip Innovation Program. What everybody is concerned about is, of course, how much money the government is going to spend, since you can't just have a paper with all the plans written on it. According to reports by DigiTimes and other media, to be honest, I was a bit confused at the time when I was reading the report. The Minister of National Science and Technology Council, Tsung Tsung Wu, said the original budget plan was in 12 billion and will begin to invest in 2024. He also emphasized that it is not the rumored N15 billion, which was a rumor said by his superior. For those interested, you can go check on more details. Anyway, Wu said the purpose of the investment is to strengthen the IC design industry of Taiwan, with the goal being 10 years later in 2033, Taiwan's IC design industry's global share will rise from the existing 19% which is counted using the council's own way to 40%. It means that the share will double, to spend 10 years to double. As for the market share of seven nanometers and below, based on his calculation, Wu said that the percentage will rise from the existing 60% to 80% in 10 years in 2033, an increase of around 30%. The government wants to invest in 12 billion over 10 years to boost Taiwan's chip design capability in order to confront China's counterparts is not going to be enough. Taiwan now has about 260 to 280, but not over 300 IC designing companies. But how many are there in China? Let's see the chart I prepared. China Semiconductor Industry Association Integrated Circuit Design Branch Chairman Professor Xiao Yunwei published a marvelous report in December last year with very detailed content. The number of China's chip companies with growth statistics can be traced back to the past 10, 20 years. The final figure at the end of last year is 3234, a number that is more than 10 times higher than that of Taiwan and is growing fast. However, these Chinese firms are only strong in number and are mostly small and weak, so how do we know that? 
because the total revenues of these 3,000 companies last year were only a $78, $74 billion looking at the chart. It was converted from the chart's figure of about CNY 535 billion. And how much did Taiwan generate? It was used $44.2 billion. You can see that China's IC design companies were 10 times higher in number compared to those of Taiwan, but their combined revenues were less than double. Of course, a lot of Chinese companies have just begun spending money but have not yet started business. Still, the IC design industry's most important asset is talent, which China is also stronger than Taiwan, and this is also causing pressure on Taiwan. There is still a little time for me to add one more point about the Biden administration of the U.S. restricting China's exports. Not allowing China to make high-end chips has suppressed China's pace of technological development. Although it is very effective, there is a side effect. What does China do when it can't buy advanced chips? Finding ways to do it itself. International chip companies can't supply their chips to the Chinese market. This turned out to help the Chinese local IC industry as there are no competitors, and the results of these companies not showing up are forcing Chinese companies to do it reluctantly, but the quality of the product is not going to be good. But what about the domestic buyers in China? Buyers cannot buy from international suppliers, so they turn to purchasing poor quality domestic goods. But it instead gives the over 3,000 Chinese IC designers the opportunity to strengthen their design capacity. But the U.S., of course, did not do it intentionally. These results are completely unexpected. You can say that the U.S. had no intention of doing so, or the situation just turned out completely opposite. The punishment is instead helping the Chinese government to grow its IC industry. The Chinese government actually has policies to gradually replace export products with domestic made ones, but the sanction has instead improved China's chip design ability and is now going further to affect Taiwan's IC design industry. All are connected and are affecting each other. Isn't that just interesting? That's all for this episode. This program is broadcast on Tuesday every two weeks. Please subscribe to us, give us a like, share and forward this video and also leave your comments to let us know your thoughts. I am Rocky. See you next time. Thank you.